I love eating white potatoes. And when previously asked whether or not they're healthy for us, Dr. Michael Greger would say that every time we eat a white potato, it's a lost opportunity to eat a really healthy sweet potato or purple fleshed potato. However, in a recent Q&A, Dr. Greger shared some concerning data about white potatoes and diabetes risk. So let's take a listen to the clip first, and then we'll come back and look at some healthy hacks to perhaps get around this concern. What's the problem with white potatoes for non-diabetics? Isn't the glycemic index and the high glycemic spike only a concern for diabetics and pre-diabetes? Thinks that's the advice of Frank Sachs. The problem with white potato and diabetics is a meta-analysis of all the studies done to date show an increased risk for diabetes, even for boiled or baked potatoes, even accounting for things like sour cream and salt and butter and all that stuff. So the, the problem is that it may increase your risk of getting diabetes. That's not diabetics getting more diabetes. That's people without diabetes increasing the risk of getting diabetes. So that's why we would be concerned. We assume it's because if it's a high glycemic food. You say, wait a second, why do we care about glycemic impact if we don't ourselves have prediabetes or diabetes? And we know from studies done, there's a, a drug that can basically turn foods from high glycemic foods to low glycemic foods. And this is a drug that extends life, proving that indeed eating lower glycemic foods is healthier for you. When we eat high glycemic foods, even people with uh, normal blood sugars are fasting, um, we get this exaggerated blood sugar spike. Our body releases so much insulin in response that we can actually drop down below fasting. And when we do, our body kind of freaks out and uh, releases this fat into the blood, these triglycerides. And so, you know, you can do these, you know, studies looking at, you know, artery function within hours of consumption. And most of the problem is with saturated fat, but you can also get problems eating a variety of unhealthy foods, which includes high glycemic foods, which is basically mostly processed garbage like Wonder Bread. But there are a few high glycemic um, whole plant foods, including white potatoes. But there's lots of things you can do. If you saw my uh, recent webinar, you can add vinegar, lemon juice, broccoli, lowers the glycemic impact. You can choose yellow potatoes better than white, purple potatoes, and purple flesh potatoes better than yellow. So Dr. Greger touched on the vinegar and lemon juice hacks. And this is because this study showed that you can lower the glycemic index and glycemic load of a meal by either leaving the skins on the potato for extra fiber or adding lemon juice or vinegar. The researchers also found that eating mixed meals with protein and fats helps to slow the digestion of carbs and the rise in blood sugar levels. This study found that the glycemic index and insulinemic indices of cold potatoes added with vinegar were significantly reduced by 43% and 31% respectively, compared with the glycemic index and insulinemic indices of freshly boiled potatoes. We think this is because the vinegar slows down the rate at which food empties from the stomach and enters the small intestine for digestion, therefore slowing the absorption of glucose into the blood. The acidity from the acetic acid results in a low pH and slows stomach emptying. This study found that by chilling and reheating potatoes, you can also lower the glycemic impact. This is because cooling potatoes after cooking increases the amount of resistant starch. This in turn helps lower the glycemic index by around 28%. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.